afternoon and welcome to the budget meeting of the Liverpool City Council. It's the Liverpool City combined with us. That's 20 years since we've done anything like that. Um, can all phones be turned to silent, please? And uh, it has been mentioned by a number of people who have had emails about it. Can you speak as closely as is possible to the mics? Because other people, certainly in the public gallery, feel you can't hear us um, and our work. Uh, item one is apologies for pants, absence. Are there any apologies to Thank you, Chair. I've re received apologies from Councillor Moorhead, Councillor Grumwald, Councillor O'Neill, Councillor Moran, Professor Dane, Janet Beer, Gideon Ben Tobin, Reverend Loudon, and Jane Kennedy. Are there any further apologies? No? Uh, item two is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations from previous members? I haven't received any, Chair. Item three is the minutes of the previous combined authority meeting on the 19th of January 2018. Uh, they include that on pages one to six. Can I ask for these to be agreed, please? Agreed. Item four is the uh, Liverpool City Region uh, Metro Mail announcements. Uh, we'll uh, defer this until the next meeting that we have in March. Um, item five, therefore, is um, the SIF funding and the Quarry Farm project seeking, seeking approval for funds from the Single Investment Fund. The application is supported by a full business case which is attached as Appendix 1 to the report. Frank, if you can just briefly take us through this. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, as I mentioned, this is looking for approval of the full business case for the Quarry Farm scheme. Another one of the projects going through this is a reason Single Investment Fund. Uh, the details of the report are covered of the scheme, sorry, covered in Appendix 1, but running through the, the brief details. This is for 18 workshop units and a management centre. It's located in Nosley. It's looking for 465,000 of capital contribution from the SIF. It has a very strong benefit cost ratio of 15.3 and will create 32 jobs. So, in summary, once again, we're looking for approval of this full business case for Quarry Farm and happy to answer any questions that may raise as a consequence of the report. Any questions? Um, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 7? I suppose item 6 is the, the main event. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask John to take us through the budget proposals in detail. And as you'll see, it's split into three separate sections. Combined authority, the transport levy, and the total tolls for 2018-19. But first, um, if I can just give you a, a brief picture of what is happening on a much broader level. Um, this is new territory for us and other male combined authorities across the country. Combined authorities have previously set budgets, but this is the first time that we've set a male budget. And whilst we're at the start of this great constitutional experiment called devolution. Uh, I think we should be all proud as a city and region uh, that we put ourselves at the vanguard really of national uh, change to really start to take our city and region forward. And I'd like to first of all pay tribute to the leaders of all six districts who are the architects of devolution in our area. The devolution agreement that they signed delivers 900 million pounds of funded over 30 years and since I was elected in May last year we've secured almost half a billion pounds of additional government funding for the city region. So make no mistake there are other areas uh, without the Metro Mayor the Devolution Agreement who are looking enviously at this extra funding and just as importantly the additional powers that we have. So we have to make sure we make the most of it and deliver on behalf of the 1.5 million people that we represent. I also agree that with some of the plans that we're developing, some of which we're making provision for in this budget, that we can bring about the transformation of change for our entire city region. Our big ticket proposals around the Tidal project, digital connectivity, and using the Devolved Powers and the Buses Act, for instance, that attract the national interest. But of course, and I understand this, people are impatient to see the fruits of our hard labour. But they're not as impatient as I am. I want to ensure uh, that 
the foundations that we're building last for generations, whilst at the same time providing visible evidence of the excellent work that's been undertaken to date. So I can assure everyone that the benefits of the investment that we've already made will become apparent very soon. Working with our local authorities, our projections show that by 2020, we will have created 2,000 extra apprenticeships, 5,000 more jobs, and built, in conjunction with them, 25,000 new homes. But of course, the limited devolution and funding that we've received aren't the magic one that many believe them to be. We're never going to be able to address all of the problems overnight, um, such as the harm created to our area by government austerity. But I think that all of us want to seize fully the opportunity that devolution provides to us to steal a march on some of our rival areas and cities nationally, but also we're competing internationally. And by having the power to control our own destiny, we can do things differently and build the fairer, more just and prosperous city region that we all want to see. Now, as I said, this is my first budget and during the election I made a number of pledges but no national administration would be expected to deliver their whole manifesto commitments within nine months and neither should I or the combined authority. So today's budget is the first step in building a platform to, de to deliver on those promises in full. Now finally before I hand over to John, I just wanted to thank the other members of the combined authority for their input into the budget making process. The constitutional vagaries of the process meaning that it's the Metro Mayor that puts forward the budget to these proposals, in other words. But this really has been a team effort. And I want to say that's leaders and officers alike. Over many months we've had discussions uh, in order to put this paper together. And those debates have been conducted in a comradely and productive manner. And I'd just like to put on record my thanks everybody for doing that and I'll hand over to John who will take us through the budget papers and then the opportunity for anyone to ask any questions so over to John. Thank you, uh, just before I start, is that okay, can people hear me? Yeah, great, okay, um, as you've heard this is the first budget that's been brought forward by the Metro Mayor um, and as such there's a separate requirement to identify the costs associated with the exercise of these new mayoral powers which are basically related to the delivery of the city region's devolution deal. Those can take the table on. Firstly, it should be, should be noted that the budget for mural costs is much, much wider than the direct costs associated with the mayor's office. These are just a fraction of the costs in table one. The majority of the budget is about providing the necessary professional capacity to allow the mayor to deliver the investment package you just heard, well over a billion pound and counting, Wherever possible, we've used existing expertise and capacity across all the partners in the city region, but obviously and clearly we're at a stage now where the scale and complexity of these devolved powers and those resources requires new and specialist capacity, and this budget provides for that. The government has devolved powers and resources to the city region without devolving the resources needed to manage these. This obviously presents a financial challenge and the Mayor and the combined authority members and constituent districts have endeavoured to minimise the impact on local taxpayers by presenting a budget that will allow the Mayor to fund these commitments next year while the city region works collaboratively to identify a long-term sustainable solution to this challenge. Next year we'll be following through on investments in cultural events programme, IFB 2018 and the Households into Work programme, all from the revenue budget. And the Mayor's also, as you've heard, identified 1.6 million to fund those mayoral priority commitments that you just heard. The second element of it, an important element, relates to the transport powers of the combined authority and the transport levy that funds these will remain frozen next year as proposed. Um, Members will recall that that transport levy is reduced by £32 million over the last three years. And that's released about a million pound plus back into districts and spending power and saved around £100 for a banned property. 
The Transport Committee considered yesterday in detail the implications of this levy freeze at its meeting and are confident that Mersey Travel can deliver the city region's transport requirements for 1819 within the resource that is made available in this budget. That said, the Transport Committee did and do recognise the long-term challenges associated with, uh, for instance, how we maintain the local elements of the concessionary travel scheme in the context of the nation's <coughs> regulation, how we manage the implications of reducing special rail grant that we receive from government on how we operate the Mersey Rail concession, how we maintain the social value of bus services in light of cost pressures, and what's the right financial package that allows us to invest in the Mersey ferries, and particularly the, the vessels. The capital programme for transport next year, again, is the largest investment in transport that Mersey Travel has undertaken with Magul North, the reopening of Holton Curve and the transformation of Newton Willow Station <coughs> being amongst the larger projects and those will be delivered to completion next year. It's also a pivotal year for the new rolling stock project. As part of the transport element of the budget, we're also recommending and confirming the continuation of the differential levy arrangements in respect of Holton, which recognise the differences in transport arrangements arising from Holton's position outside the former ITA area. And finally, that leaves tunnel tolls. Tunnel revenues form an integral part of the budget, and the schedule of tolls that have been proposed was considered, again, in depth by the Transport Committee at its meeting yesterday. Following the Transport Committee's recommended schedule of tolls, next year we'll see the introduction of an off-peak toll, set at a pound for cars using fast tag. The peak fast tag will remain frozen at £1.20, we do, however, need to ensure that the tunnels generate sufficient revenue to cover the cost of their operation and to provide for future investment and maintenance. And because of this, the recommendation is that the cash toll increase by 10 pence next year. This is the first increase for three years, and taken as a whole package, it should be noted that the majority of journeys are now undertaken using fast tag, so most users will either see a reduction or a freeze in the cost of using the tolls. And again, it goes without saying, these discounts are available to anybody simply by registering for a fast tag account. The Transport Committee also wishes to look at further options that may help local residents and businesses in the future. And Mersey Travel as the tunnel operator has also been asked to look at using technology to reduce the cost of tunnel, tunnel operations over the longer term. In the annex to the budget, is presented the Treasury Management Statement, which deals with City region borrowing and investment <coughs> ability and sets limits on the management of both. And as such, this is a key part of the overall assurance framework. And finally, and with apologies, just to point out that the tables in the report contain a slight error in numbering. Table 5, referred to in recommendation E, should read table 4, and likewise, recommendation H should refer to table 6 rather than to table 7. So that's just a brief synopsis of the budget paper. But, um, I'm here, and uh, Sarah Johnson, who's the Head of Finance for Mersey Travel and the CA. Uh, we're both here and happy to answer any questions. So with that, if I hand back to, to, to the Metro Mayor. Okay. Um, do you members have any questions or comments on budget proposals? No? Okay. Right. Sorry, Phil. Yeah, on, on the budget proposals. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't want to kind of repeat what you, what you said, uh, Steve, but I, I think it it is important that we um, we have the capacity in place to deal with the um, agenda that we've got, and, and you know I fully support the um, proposals in the in the report. Um, the only area that I do have a problem with, I'm just wanted to just spend a minute just highlighting this. Um, I am uh, sadly not in agreement with with item H, which is the increase in tunnel tolls, as um, you know, as leader of Wirral, many of my residents have, um, have been in touch with me and feel uh, that this is um, uh, a step too far. Um, whilst I recognise that it's the first increase in tunnel tolls, in the cash tunnel tolls, uh, for three years, austerity has not gone well. In fact, I would argue austerity has got worse in that period of time. And I know from, from, from the representations that I've had, um, how many, many families, not just in rural, but throughout Merseyside and the city region are really struggling. And, you know, given that um, the 
majority of people who use the, the tunnels, many of them will be from, from my borough. I can't in all conscience support an increase in, in the tunnel toll um, by 10p for the reasons I've mentioned. So um, I, 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 it's my intention to vote against that element of the budget for those reasons. Thanks, thanks Chair. Okay, so what, what we'll do then, we'll go through the recommendations, take H out and we'll have a separate um, vote on H. Um, just in mitigation so that people will know for the record, um, there, there would not be any imposition on anybody to pay the increase because of course we've frozen the fast tag at £1.20 and reduced the off peak. So if people move to fast tag, which is a better way of doing it because it's a quicker route through the tunnel so that we can um, speed the flow and stop the air pollution and all of those aspects of it, um, nobody has to pay anything extra. But we, obviously, as the leader of will, I'm absolutely certain what your position is, so we'll do a, a separate vote. So um, with that, and given that John has identified the amendments to the table numbering, so just the numbering of the tables, um, we'll take H out. So the recommendations, therefore, set out on pages 16 and 17. Can we agree them all apart from H, which we are now dealing with separately? Are they agreed? Agreed. Okay, so now if we go on to um, H, the recommendation on page 17, with the amendment to the table, uh, which is 6 in the report, um, can we agree? That recommendation. Do you want to take a vote? Okay. Do you want the vote to be recalled? Yes, please. Okay, we'll do that for me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll ask you to indicate whether you wish to vote in favour, against, or abstain from the proposal contained in paragraph H of the report, uh, item 6 on the agenda. Metro Mayor Steve Rotherham. Four. Councillor Phil Davies. Against. Councillor Ian Lair. For. Councillor Rob Colehill. Abstain. Deputy Mayor Anna Byrne. Against. Councillor Long. For. Okay, the scores are three, two, four recommendations, so the recommendation is carried. Um, so um, we'll move on to item seven, which is um, the uh, approval to change representation on the overview and scrutiny committee. Councillor Alan Dean from the Liverpool City Council has stood down from the committee and this has been replaced by Councillor Tricia O'Brien. Can we agree the recommendation is set out on page 53, please? Agreed. Okay, on item 8, we haven't had any public questions received within the time scale uh, necessary. And on item 9, the same applies that no petitions or statements have been received within that time scale. Item 10, therefore, is the minutes of the Transport Committee held on the 4th of January uh, 2018. They're here for our confirmation. Can we confirm the minutes are set out on pages 55 and 266, please? Okay. Item 11 is the minutes of the Liverpool City Region of Books and Discipline Committee. Um, that was, uh, they were held up, uh, on the 17th of November and 23rd of November 2017. Again, they're here for our confirmation. Can we confirm the minutes are set out on pages 69 to 72, please? Um, we've not been informed of any urgent items, so the next meeting of the Commander Authority will take place on Friday the 9th of March 2018 at 1pm here in the Commander Authority Chamber. And I declare the meeting closed.